Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stellaris Mod Spotlight Series. I am Sir Tristan. We just got our hands on Asimov Patch, Patch 1.2. There are so many good changes with that patch. There's an entire section on the patch notes dedicated to new ways to mod the game. What this means is in the coming weeks, we'll have brand new mods that weren't even possible before today. Since Asimov only came out a couple days ago, none of those mods are quite ready yet. So this week we have a special episode that's all about taking the visual elements of Stellaris and cranking them up to the next level. Producers, roll the- wait, hang on, wait. Guys, listen, I've been thinking, I don't actually need two of you. All you do is sit there waiting for me to tell you to press a button. I'm sorry, but, but you're fired. All right, all right, I can do this. Where's that button? Ah, there it is. Boop. So I was a bit dishonest in the opening when I said that there were no mods that were available for patch 1.2 that took advantage of the new modding aspects. The first mod this week is a brand new mod built for patch 1.2 that shot to the top of the highest rated list. This is a fine selection of quality map modes, probably by Tiger Teeth. This mod adds seven new map modes to the already existing four map modes added by the Asimov patch. Like the map modes added by Paradox, these new ones will use colors to show you specific things about neighboring empires. The dominant ethos map mode colors empire borders by their founding species fanatic ethos, if they have one. The government map mode colors empire borders by the ideological orientation of their government. The democracy map mode colors empire borders by their voting system. The AI rights map mode colors empire borders based on how they treat artificial intelligence. The slavery map mode colors empire borders based on their slavery policies. The purge policy map mode colors empire borders based on an empire's willingness to purge populations. And the war philosophy map mode colors empire borders based on their war philosophy, another new addition to the Asimov patch. After testing some of these map modes, I don't think many of them are going to be useful more than a few times per game, but when I did need to find a specific piece of information, these map modes were very helpful. Especially when it comes to the new war philosophy policies, as those can affect your ability to form alliances with other empires. Let's take a trip. A trip into another universe. Another universe where, like in Stellaris, Humans are the minority, struggling to make a name for themselves amidst dozens of other species. At least until the Reapers come back and harvest everyone. <laughs> this is Mass Effect, Systems Alliance Ships by Firstwolf. Uh, Frostwolf. This mod adds a new ship selection when creating a new race. This new ship selection features spaceships from the Mass Effect universe, Bioware's sci-fi RPG. With this mod, the Corvette looks like the original Normandy, destroyers look like the Normandy from Mass Effect 2, cruisers take on the look of the Geneva-class ship, and battleships look like the Everest-class ships. Like other ship mods we've seen, both civilian ships and stations are also replaced and resemble spacecraft from Mass Effect. In addition to all that, if you grab new ship classes and more, a mod which we've covered here on the channel before, you can also get a unique battle cruiser, light carrier, carrier, strike cruiser, dreadnought, and flagship. Again, all from the Mass Effect universe. I think I can safely speak for all Shepard fans when I say, now all we need is a Reaper invasion in the game Crisis, and the modding community for Stellaris can be considered complete. I think most people by now have moved on to 1080p gaming. A 1920 by 1080 monitor isn't really that hard to come by anymore, which is why it's strange that so many user interfaces in so many games don't make use of all the extra space. The mod UI Overhaul 1080p by Tyrus LFT pushes the Stellaris interface to the max by greatly extending the height of every single frame. Alongside another modder, Dr. Maple, he's adjusted the Outlier, the Policies page, the Edicts page, Government view, Empire view, Research view, Situation log, Edicts window, Planet window, Species window, Leader window, the Combat view, 
and created a custom ship designer view where the 3D portion of the interface takes up a lot more space than it used to. While helpful, when these windows are open you do lose a good portion of the playable space behind the window at times, but usually you're looking at a menu for a reason to find some bit of information, and this mod helps you find that info a lot quicker than you used to be able to so you can get back to playing the game faster. Next up is a mod that improves the surface view when looking at your populations on any planet. Color Coded Pop Status by Parasite X changes the color of each population status icon. Instead of each icon being a similar color, this mod makes each one unique. Green is for migrating populations, blue is for enslaved populations, yellow for unemployed populations, and red for dying or purged populations. I think this mod is important because clicking on a population notification only takes you to the planet and it doesn't highlight the exact population that's in trouble. So this mod helps you rapidly locate the problem so you can correct it faster. Last up this week is a mod that adds a bunch of unique skyboxes to Stellaris, adding some glorious looking backgrounds to your system view. This mod, called Beautiful Universe version 2.0 by Avulmar, changes the skybox on every system view and inserts some truly eye-popping stars, galaxies, and nebula to the background. Specifically, this mod adds real-life NASA reference photos, EVE Online skybox textures, and digital artwork from various sources to the skyboxes in Stellaris. For me, personally, I've never found better looking skyboxes than the ones found in EVE Online, so I'm really excited to add this mod to my collection. And you should be too, just look at these things. Hey, so everybody, real quick, with the release of Asimov and Patch 1.2, Paradox have completely changed their skyboxes, and they're starting to look really good, but unfortunately, it broke this mod completely. It does not work with the new Stellaris patch. You're going to have to wait for the mod creators to patch this mod so it works again. They did say they were going to do that. Hopefully by the time you even see this video, the mod's been updated, but just wanted to let you know that. And we've come to the end of our episode of the weekly Stellaris Mod Spotlight. Let me know your favorite cosmetic mods that I didn't mention in this video down in the comments below. Also, I know a lot of you are really enjoying these weekly mod spotlights. Each one is getting thousands of views, and that makes me really happy. If you are enjoying them, please consider hitting that subscribe button in the bottom right corner of this video. I typically don't like to add overlays or adverts covering up the video content itself, but I want to see if this button encourages people to subscribe so we can expand to the reach of this series so every Stellaris player knows about the great mods that have been released. Plus, new subscribers just make me feel all warm inside. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.